Hey folks, Luke with Alternate Arm Self-Defense. Now, today for our second episode of Fundamental Physics of Less Than Lethal, I am bringing to you what I would consider to be one of the most important topics. I'm giving it its whole entire uh, episode, and that is on unit conversions. And the reason why unit conversions is a very, very important topic to understand is because units are what we use to describe certain physics concepts in less than lethal and uh, ballistics, projectile motion, all of it. Now, just to give you an example, whenever you hear a launcher's output in terms of its energy, you're either going to hear one of three things. You're going to hear joules, newton meters, or foot pounds. And today, I'd like to explain to you the difference between the three, how to convert between the three, and why we choose one over the other. And just to jump right into it, what is a unit? Well, a unit is a universally agreed upon measurement. What do I mean by that? Well, we have certain concepts, we'll say actually usage cases, such as distance. Well, in the metric system, the fundamental unit of distance is meters. And just to actually roll right into it, SI units are the standard units that we use in science to describe certain, um, describe certain qualities, right? So for distance, the SI unit for distance is meters, okay? For mass, we have kilograms. For force, we have newtons. And finally, for time, we have seconds. I think everybody can agree on seconds. That's fine. But... The reason why, and by the way, there are way more SI units than this. I'm just giving you four. There are way more than that. The reason why we use these is because all of the physics equations that I have mentioned and I am going to mention are with these in mind. So when I tell you that kinetic energy, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to go down so I can write this down. When I tell you that kinetic energy is equivalent to one half mass times the velocity squared I am, of course, referring to mass in terms of kilograms and velocity in terms of meters per second, obviously quantity squared. And if you were to change those units around, let's say for this you were to use pounds or grains, and if for this, for the velocity, you were to use feet per second, you would have to change this constant out here, and it would complicate the soup. So when we give you physics equations such as kinetic energy, um, same thing with force, if we use mass times acceleration, um, we are referring, of course, to the SI units for this. SI units just meaning like the standard units we use in science, right? So going on to a very important topic, a very controversial topic, if you want to call it that, the usage of joules versus foot pounds in energy. Now, a joule is another way of saying a newton meter. They mean the same thing. So I'm actually going to write this over here, and you'll understand why. I'm also going to flip around the foot and pounds. It means the same thing. You'll understand in a second. So if I have newton meters, okay, we're going to put verses again. Foot pounds, I'm going to switch that around. We have pound feet. Your intuition would tell you that there has to be some sort of correlation between these two because they look very similar, right? You have newtons matching with pounds and meters matching with feet. And your intuition would actually be correct. These are both saying the same thing, just in different units, right? So with newtons and with pounds, this is obviously, these are referring to force and then meters and feet, you're obviously referring to distance. So there is actually a way to convert directly from one to the other. That rolls into dimensional analysis, which is a really fancy way of saying using algebra to cancel out like terms, using a conversion factor, which is to say a constant value that relates to units of the same usage case. That's a lot of words. I'm gonna use this chart, that'll make a lot more sense. So for concept, I'm gonna have three. So we're gonna start with distance. So I'm actually going to use, you know what, we're going to go with a different color here. I'm going to grab red and blue. For distance, we have an imperial For imperial, we of course have feet. For metric, we have the meter. Okay? For mass, and maybe I should use a different color just to split them up. For mass, we have, for imperial, we actually have pounds of mass, because there is a difference. And then for metric, we have the kilogram. Okay? 
bringing it to the third, and I guess I'll grab the black marker for this one, we have force. Okay. And for imperial, we have pounds of force. You can see why I prefer metric. <laughs> and then for metric, we have newtons. Okay. And believe it or not, between each of these, there is a conversion factor that will allow you to directly convert from one to the other. So just to give you guys an example, we're going to grab the green marker for the numbers, right? So we're going to do it. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to say for, I'm going to go over here. We have one meter, one kilogram, and we're going to use, yeah, we'll say one Newton. Okay. There is a number for all of these that equates to these three numbers, right? So a really good place to start would probably be for mass, because this is an easy one. For one kilogram, you have 2.205 pounds of mass. So for one kilogram of mass, you get 2.205 pounds of mass, okay? For meters, you get 3.308 feet. So per one meter, you will always have 3.308 feet. For force, for one newton, I'm actually going to have to search this up because usually I do the other way around where it's one pound of force equals four, four and some change newtons. But if I were to search this up, we're going to say how many pounds of force, how many pounds of force are in one newton? One Newton. It's going to be a decimal, so I apologize. 0.2248 pounds of force. So we have 0 0.0.2248 pounds of force in one Newton. And in case you're wondering how we determine this, this is actually pretty neat. So for, we're just going to take force because that's actually a really good one. We have that force equals mass times the acceleration. So if we're referring to imperial, and you know what, I should probably, we're gonna move this over a little bit just so I can explain, sorry, apologies. I'm not a great teacher, so sorry again. <laughs> we have force equals mass times acceleration. That is to say, the pound, pounds of force equals the pounds of mass multiplied by the acceleration, which is um, feet per second squared. For metric, we have force equals mass times acceleration, which is to say newtons equals kilograms multiplied by meters per second squared. So the way that we determine that one newton is equivalent to 0.2248 pounds of force is you take this, one kilogram, see right here, one kilogram is 2.205 pounds of mass. One foot, rather, sorry, one meter is 3.308 feet. So that's how we convert from newtons to pounds of force. That's just to show you that these equations are the same exact equation, we just use different numbers. And the reason why that's important is because if I wanna convert from newton meters so to say joules, to foot pounds, we're gonna do what is called dimensional analysis. So I'm gonna take 10 joules, and let's say I wanna find out how many pound feet of energy that is. We can switch it, but we're gonna do that for now. So I'm gonna go down here, and I uh, will stick with the black marker. So I'm gonna do 10 joules, 10 joules, which is equivalent to 10 Newton meters, okay? We need to change these units to pound feet. Now, back to what I said earlier with algebra and canceling out like terms. If you have a fraction, and let's say on the fraction you have a unit on the top and the unit on the bottom that they are the exact same unit, you can actually cancel those out. I'll show you why that's important. Let's say I were to multiply this, because I want to turn it into pound feet. I'm going to do a fraction. And let's say I want to get rid of Newtons first, right? So I'm going to put Newtons down here because it'll cancel out the Newtons, okay? And if you go over here to our force, Newtons and pound feet 
have a direct relationship. So I'm gonna, sorry, pounds of force, have a direct relationship. So I'm gonna put pounds up here. I'm not gonna draw the F because it's a little annoying. <laughs> so you have Newtons and pounds. One Newton is equivalent to 0 0.2248 pounds, okay? And we're actually gonna go ahead and do that really fast. I'm gonna pull out my calculator. Feel free to follow along. And by the way, feel free to test me on the end of this. I want you to go ahead and put in, convert 10 joules to foot pounds. And we're gonna see if I get it right. So we have 10 Newton meters times 0.2248. And then if you want, we can divide by one. It doesn't really do anything to the equation, but if you wanna do it for practice, that's fine. So actually that's a really easy one. I should have known that because all we're doing, anyways, <laughs> we're gonna cancel out the Newtons and we're gonna end up with 2.248, 2.248. What are the units left over? Pounds and meters. Pounds and meters. Now, this isn't what we want. We want pound feet. So to convert that, we have to cancel out this meters and be left with pound feet. And the way we do that is we're gonna do what we just did before. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna make another fraction. On the bottom, we're gonna put meters. On the top, we're gonna to put feet. And apologies for getting in this a little bit, but it's fine, we'll just uh, separate them. <laughs> for one meter, you have 3.308 feet. 3.308 feet. So I'm gonna take this 2.248, I'm going to multiply it by 3.308 feet, so times 3.308. And we're gonna end up with 7.436384. We're gonna say 7.44, okay? So once again, like last time, we're canceling out these meters. So we're gonna end up with, what was that number again? 7.44, 7.44. What are the leftover units? Pound feet, pound feet of energy. We can just put an E for energy. So all we did is we made the units work for us because we know the conversion factors, so to say the constants that relate the two for each uh, usage case, right? So we took 10 joules, which is 10 Newton meters. We canceled out the Newtons to end up with pound meters, canceled out the meters to end up with pound feet. Now, I'm gonna actually show you guys how you can do this in one step, sort of one step. So we're gonna do something different. I'm gonna do, let's convert uh, 15 pound feet of energy. And I want to get, I wanna end up rather with joules. So there are two ways you can do this. Number one is you can either do what we just did, which is write out each one, Number two is you can actually do this in one step. And the way we're gonna do that is, I'm gonna multiply, okay? We're gonna draw this. We need to cancel out pounds and feet. And if you look over here at our pounds and feet, you'll notice, interestingly enough, you'll notice that both of these pounds and feet have a one that match the Newtons and the meters. So if I wanna cancel out pound feet, I'm gonna put pounds multiplied by feet down here. And then we're gonna take that conversion. So, um, oh, where's it at? Yeah, 0 0.2248, 0 0.2248. And I should have given myself a little bit more space, apologies, multiplied by feet, 3.308, okay? And then up here, we're gonna have one times one Newton times meters, okay? If this is confusing, please feel free to use the first example because it, it could probably be easier, okay? So we're gonna take this 15, got my calculator, a fancy calculator. We're gonna take this 15, we're gonna multiply it times one times one, that's pretty easy. We're gonna take this 0.2248 so I'm gonna grab that 0.2248. I'm gonna multiply it by 3.308. I told you guys we were getting in the weeds today with algebra, so I apologize. So 
These two multiplied together is 0.7436384. That's kind of a lot. Fun fact, that is the direct conversion factor from Newton meters to foot pounds because, you know what, I lied, I'm not doing this in one step because I do want you to see this, okay? We have that 15 pound feet times, we're gonna say one Newton meter is equivalent to 0.7436. So 0 0.7436 pound feet. All I did was multiplied these two conversion factors right here to determine that, Newton times meters, to determine that this is the direct um, conversion from Newton meters to pound feet, right? So we're gonna turn this into Newton meters by canceling out the pound feet cancels out right here. Sorry, I forgot the T. <laughs> So it cancels out. So you have 15 times one divided by 0.7436, and you're gonna end up with some answer with Newton meters, which is to say joules, as your final answer. So I'm gonna take 15 divided by 0.7436, and that's a rounding up, by the way. There are a few more decimals in there. But anyways, we're gonna take that, so that is equivalent to 20.17 joules. Like I said, or 20.17 Newton meters, which is 20.17 joules. If you start by using the SI units, you don't have to worry about doing any conversions at all. And if you do have to do those conversions, you just use our dimensional analysis example here, make the units work for you. You start off with what you know. In this case, we started off knowing that we have 10 joules, which is 10 Newton meters. You wanna get to pound feet, so you find out what those conversion factors are. You can just search them up. You don't have to do the math for it. If you just search it up, you will find out what those conversion factors are, and then you use that to cancel out like terms, and of course, end up with the desired units. So. Now you guys can see why I wanted to dedicate an entire episode to this. I apologize if this was a bit less palatable than the last episode. I figured since we're going into math, it might, you know, go over some folks' heads, which I don't blame you. Some, whenever I was learning this in high school and in college, I was like, oh, at first this is pretty, pretty complicated. But I promise the more you do it, the easier it gets. And this is, to be honest, this is probably the simplest that we're going to be doing. Some of the future videos are going to be quite a bit more complicated, but it is very important that you understand every single unit for every single usage case has a conversion factor. So these are all basically the same thing. The only thing that is separating a foot from a meter is some constant number. And that goes with all the other units. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know that was a little bit of a long-winded one. I am not a teacher by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just trying my best to convey information that I know to you guys for you to use in your usage cases. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in episode three. Bye-bye.